This episode of Days of Future Cast has been brought to you by the patrons at patreon.com slash duckvtv. To become a patron, you just give duckvtv a couple of bucks a month, and you get cool rewards like access to the Slack channel, you get episodes early, you get to take part in polls when uh, they decide what they're going to be playing on Watch Out for Fireballs or Abject Suffering. So go check that out. That's patreon.com slash duckvtv. Ladies, gentlemen, any mutant. Mutants only free scientists. 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 I'm Jeremy Greer. I'm Gary Butterfield. And this is Days of Future Cast, the podcast where me and Gary talk about the X-Men animated series from the mid-90s. This week we have two very cool episodes. Gary, how are you today? Are you feeling pretty good about yourself? Everything okay? I'm I'm doing all right. I'm uh, I'm hanging in there. I'm Mm. living large, low and lazy. Large, Um, low and lazy. The triple L. I like that. Large, low and lazy. Hello. (laughs) Oh, it's me. Uh, I'm Large yeah. Marge. Just <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gregarious scary, and I'm here to say, <laughs> um, yeah. I it's a uh, yeah. I'm doing doing fine. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, things are things are things are good in Jeremy Land. I can't can't really complain. Like hmm. things are just just kind of rad. So I'm I'm looking forward to all of this yeah. stuff. Um, I am excited crazy. about about these two episodes because they are it's a two-parter it's a magneto focused thing and magneto is awesome in it and i kind of love everything about this like i love everything about these episodes yeah this is uh this is very specific um down to the uh you know the individual issues uh, a a comics you know storyline mm-hmm. from uh from the mid 90s so do you want to um do you want to read us the description for part 1 yeah let's go ahead and get uh, get right into it uh, this is Sanctuary, uh, part one. Uh, Magneto builds a home strictly for mutants on the orbiting base known as Asteroid M. The message uh, goes out worldwide of initial exodus, and he finds just as many eager to join him as those anxious to destroy him. That's not particularly accurate, but Mm-mm. cool stuff happens in this episode. Yeah, this this is all um, this is all fun. I think yeah. um, uh, it it kind of starts off a little slowly. Uh, and then because we see this, we're, we're in space again, which had me, had me worried. Uh, but it's just a Russian yeah. astronaut kind of repairing something and kind of complaining under his breath. And when he gets basically kidnapped by what I immediately took to be magneto powers, like it has like that, that radiating cir- yellow circle thing that they've always used to represent uh, mm. magnetism, basically. Um, and then we go to the UN where this president who is a completely, I guess it's not the president. I guess it's the ambassador, but like this guy, like is is so wacky. Like he's like, your stolen scientists were all mutants. Know what I mean? Like he's like this, like weird Texas <laughs> drawl, like Yosemite <laughs> Sam motherfucker that I just like, I don't know. He's not in it very long. He's only in it for like two lines, but man, it's so weird. I, I don't know what it is about this show, like implanting these weird Southern accents with everybody. I, I, I love it, but it's, it's very strange. <laughs> yeah. I think that it just is if, uh, it's very hard for me to think of my voice or like anywhere, uh, in the middle of the country. That's not the South of having an accent. Like it feels like there are three, you know, uh, us accents. There's like regular New York and South. Mm-hmm. I know there are more than that, but that's what it feels like. Okay. You know, and I think they just need to differentiate these guys. So like, let's give them an accent. If you just pointed a gun at me and said like, do an accent for an American, uh, I would probably do a cowboy accent of some kind. Um, you know, so I, I, you know, it's, it's just, it comes to mind. Like, it's very obvious to me. I think that's what that's going on here. Um, this whole, like all these like UN like ambassadors and stuff, because there's the representative of uh, Genosha too. And that's a weird accent. Yes. Uh, I think yeah, Genosha that's is supposed to be off the coast of Africa. Like, uh, and it, it does not does not sound like that. But 
I like that they're actually dealing with Genosha because way back in season one, we found out that there is a country rule that's built on the back of mutant slaves, and we've never really gotten closure on that whole uh, civil rights can of worms that the X-Men have decided to ignore for four years. Their entire immigration um, policy is tax incentive based where like mutants get 10% discounts. <laughs> like come to Genosha, yeah, you get yeah, sweet yeah, discounts like, and also you, we'll enslave you for the rest yeah, of your life to, to build our stuff. Slightly cheaper hotel stays <laughs> uh, in order to be our, our slave race. And everyone is just fine with us in the fucking UN. Like who led Genosha into the UN? It's who very, it? like it's it, very it just, weird. It, Super weird, but luckily, like this only happens for a second because Magneto busts through the roof. Yes, he does, and gives this fucking like just like levitates in like Christ, and is just like, man, have I missed Magneto? Like we haven't really had Magneto since season one. I don't mm-hmm. think. Mm-hmm. Um, except he's in the Savage Land in season two and sucks. Like, but Magneto at the height of his powers, like this is this is the Magneto I I, I want. And he and like, he goes versus the Magneto, and the he goes hard. Like he's basically like, hey, number one, I, I want to say this so we can get out of the way. He takes off his helmet. Which is how you know he's going to, be to get real yeah. serious. But um, did you see this where he takes off his helmet and for like a split second, I don't know if it was the animation or whatever, his head, his hair stays up like it's almost Wolverine's hair and yeah. then before falling down. <laughs> it's so fucking hysterical yeah. to me. Like he has, he has like Magneto helmet hair and it's so cute. It's adorable. I, I, <laughs> I assumed it was the same way that like when you grab one of those, um, those electronic science spheres <laughs> and your yeah. hair stands up. <laughs> it's just the magnetism. Um, I assumed that was the same it, thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. He has a um, constant erection and his hair like, stands on end. Because, <laughs> like, um, I, I can't. I wish I could remember what those things are called. Um, like, uh, I want to say Newton's cradle, but that's the, those little clicky clacky balls. Um, it's it's awesome though. Uh, it is. He, you know, he comes in and he's. Here's the thing that makes these episodes good: is Magneto is right uh, the entire time. Magne- this is Mag- Magneto at his most heroic and good. Uh, and I am always down for that. Like, I love, uh, I love Magneto being right because he's saying like, Hey, you know what? Uh, I don't think this cohabitation thing is working out. Um, in the past, I would have tried to hit you with nuclear bombs, but we're just going to jet. Like I have created another planet, like a self-sustaining, you know, uh, this is what he's been up to for the last couple seasons, a self-sustaining asteroid base that I've named after the first letter of my name. Because, because and why not? I, <laughs> I would definitely make asteroid J. I'm just saying if I had a fucking heartbeat, <laughs> I'm going to start calling you asteroid J uh, as your nickname. Like what up asteroid J? <laughs> yeah, but the, uh, uh, you know, so I'm going to take all the mutants up there. You won't have to deal with them. We'll just take care of ourselves and everything will be fine. And like, I am not a, you know, I, I don't think I should have to say that I'm not a segregationist in real life, but like it makes sense for Magneto because like mutants are treated like shit. You're absolutely treated like shit. So just being like, Hey, here's an option. No one's gonna be forced to come, but if you want to come, all are welcome. Uh, don't fuck with like, he's showing up here. Just to be like, I'm doing this. Don't fuck with mm-hmm. me. Uh, he is. It's awesome. He has this great line where he's like, you know, my intent is not to be violent, but uh, you know, any, any interference will make it. So, you know, and like, if, if like, I'm not going to hurt you, if you fuck with me, though, I am Magneto and I have missiles and you will die. And, uh, and it, it's just awesome. And the show does this cool thing like he's doing this and it's at the U.N. So it's obviously televised because all of U.N. meetings are televised to my knowledge. Um, and But we yeah. get to see like Apocalypse watching this on his like 4D weird t- television. Mr. Sinister on his Mr. Sinister throne with his nasty boys around him all watching it on their like their floating yeah. TV. Like I just I love it when they just go around like the world. I think we see uh yeah. X Factor. I think Doctor Strange's people are are like watching this or something. Like it's like they, they get around a little bit. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, and he shows a sizzle reel of mutant rights violations. Oh yeah, and, you know, brought a tiny DVD to like <laughs> he brought a mini desk to like a flash drive <laughs> to plug into the UN thing. Not to pictured show clips like the from earlier seasons of, of the show. Of technical support where uh, Toad is like trying to get this thing, this USB <laughs> file to work. <laughs> <laughs> the little like UN logo is bouncing around the screen and all of the ambassadors are waiting for it to hit the corner. <laughs> um, the, uh, so they eventually, he's just like, he's showing like, Hey, this is how mutants are treated. Fucko is like, we're out of here. Um, I love it. Like I'm so on board with this, this plan and like everything about it. It's so in line with Magneto. It is like, this is him choosing. This is the compromise, right? Like if you look at Magneto and Xavier's extreme points of view, which they're really not, but they're kind of presented as such sometimes um this is the compromise like hey i'm not going to try to kill the humans i'm not going to try to like flip the act like north pole to the south pole and kill everybody i'm just going to leave and the fact it's like tragic that he doesn't even get to do this 
you know, this is still undercut as, as you know, we'll talk about in these next two episodes. So yeah, this, very, very, yeah, cool. this is, this is all really good. I mentioned in the last episode of this podcast that, uh, super villains typically have really dumb super villain ideas. I, I feel like this is a mm-hmm. really strong idea. Like I can, and the show goes out of its way to like show how this resonates in the mutant community too, which I think is really powerful of like our, our very next scene yeah. is like Xavier and the X-Men kind of discussing this. And then we go like to this scene where it's just, um, rogue gambit and beast all kind of like working on this blackbird or whatever and uh like all kind of talking like i mean this is magneto but maybe this is kind of a good idea <laughs> like this is not a bad plan yeah. like i don't like i think we should work together but maybe we should work together from a point where they can't kill us first like literally be off the planet and yeah. then try to make peace with one another like i don't know like that's it's a good idea gary <laughs> like it's, yeah, gambit literally says like hey we keep trying things and nothing gets better mm-hmm. You know, and it's like, how demoralizing that would that be if you were an X Men? And it's just like, well, it's the eternal struggle, and it's literally eternal, and like nothing we do, we get tiny, tiny victories, and then huge, huge setbacks, and that's us for the rest of our lives. Uh, you know, we're like seventy cars richer, and we're dead, <laughs> and we've dedicated our life to this bald pervert who like has decided to <laughs> seventy cars richer. You know, <laughs> what do you, I even put yeah. these seventy cars now that I don't live at the X Mansion? <laughs> like a, bury me under a big pile of my cars the other the other good thing um, about this is that the uh the the government like the u.s president actually like reacts in a basically a sane way of saying like hey he's telling me that he has missiles and he's telling me he's going to be peaceful but i can't trust him he's fucking magneto like telling xavier this of like yeah. i can't there's no way I, I have to consider this a threat my people are freaking out like there's no way we can just let this be which seems like a totally reasonable and rational response as from a a sitting yeah. president of like, no, no, no. Like, I'm not going to negotiate with terrorists and you are a terrorist. <laughs> and also yeah. like, this may be a good idea, but I'm still can't accept it on face value. Like we need more. But I'll let, I'll let a terrorist negotiate with a terrorist. Sure. Yeah. That's what so Xavier is going to go in and, and talk to him. And that, that works. And it's like, it just, it is night and day comparing this with the last episode where no one acted like a real person. Exactly. To all of a sudden, everyone is acting like a real person. Like, I think this is like among the best this show can get. You know, these two episodes, because like they're, they're minor, like annoyances, but, uh, you know, if you wanted to show somebody a couple episodes of the show and have them get why it's worth watching at all, mm-hmm. I think these are good examples. I think, yeah, this, this um, captures the, like a worldwide, um, sense of panic, uh, in a way that the, the dumb, like nuclear missiles pointed at 15 cities episode just totally failed to do. Like there was no, there was no totally. sense of weight to this. This feels like shit is changing. Like they, they do a really good job of, of giving it, giving these two episodes a lot of weight together. Um, so Xavier Absolutely. goes to Africa where, uh, uh Magneto is going to pick up a bunch of people in these weird pods, which will be, will be before that, uh, Gambit invites himself along. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, and the, we, Gambit's on the phone earlier in this, and it finds that we turns out he knows one of the people who's working for Magneto. Um, so it, the Gambit has like a weird. This is like a redemption arc, like hero arc for Gambit in some some ways. Yeah, and there was some like back and forth between oh. Gambit and Rogue, and she's like, "Are you considering going?" And he's like, "You know, Gambit's bags ain't packed, or some shit like that." Yeah, <laughs> Gambit <laughs> refers to himself in the third person <laughs> some of the most inappropriate times in this in this two podcast and these two episodes. It's it's yeah, it's it's he's he's kind of out of control for sure. Um, so they go, they go to the landing site, as you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, basically that like Xavier tries to talk to Magneto, but they have a very quick conversation. And Magneto's like, Hey, why don't you just come onto the thing? And Xavier's like, okay, well I'll come see your asteroid. And this will give us a chance to talk more. Uh, Magneto kind of is like straining his, his Magneto powers and to to lift these things back up to space. Um, which is kind of a, a subtle cue that like maybe things are not, not quite right with Magneto now. Uh, but he goes to Genosha to like free a bunch of the slave mutants, which hey, props to Magneto for like doing this just the fir- very first thing, and uh, yeah, doing the X Men's fucking job. Do, like, how like, is this- Charles Xavier allowing Genosha to exist? Like, what the fuck? I have no fucking clue. It doesn't like. <sighs> it is. Uh, I am. I am one hundred percent. You know, this would be the thing that made me decide to join the Brotherhood of Mutants. If I was like just a bystander mutant in this world. And I was like, I had some cool powers. And I was thinking about like joining the X-Men or joining Magneto. Magneto landing and fucking wrecking shop in Genosha would be like, yep, that's the horse I'm going to bet on. <laughs> you know, this guy who's actually like, you know, freeing oppressed people. And like, he doesn't even like kill tons of humans. Like he shows up here and this is like a really fun action scene mm-hmm. with tons of cameos. Oh my God. Um, it's so hard to list them all because it's like a, just a ton of fucking mutants everywhere. All doing cool shit. 
Yeah, like random. There's like frenzies in the background. Um, who you remember may remember from the X Men Three uh, movie, weirdly enough. Um, all the acolytes and stuff, like several of which you don't get lines in this. Some of them end up becoming important, but like Magneto's had this. Like this has been Magneto's uh, kind of surrogate team since you know their very early nineties, and has a bunch of different incarnations, and a bunch of those guys show up. Um, you know, a bunch of Morlocks that we've seen in kind of establishing shots before show up. Like a lot of people have been breaking rocks in Genosha. Yeah. Um, for a long time. And, uh, they just start, you know, fucking shit up. And Genosians have Sentinels. That seems like the X-Men should have had a problem with that. Um, you know, but there's this huge, like, good fight, um, with the Genosian magistrates, the Sentinels versus the mutants and the newly freed mutants. Um, and then, uh, Magneto is having a hard time. Like, he's, his powers aren't working quite right, mm-hmm. which they never really explain why that's happening other than just he's, he's trying to do too much. Like he just built that space base and he's going to carry a bunch of cans up into space. Yeah. So like maybe that's too much for him or like maybe it's fucked up from him losing his powers in uh, uh savage land. Yeah. That, you know, that could have been a problem as well. Yeah, this, this stuff like there's no, as much as they want to have a bunch of weird science around this, like there isn't a lot of weird science about like how mutant powers work and everything. Yeah. So what would cause you stress and what wouldn't, and again, lifting several hundred people into space and then having to fight a bunch of sentinels that you weren't aware existed, like probably would wear, would yeah. wear a dude out. Like that's a, that's a long, that's a long work day. Like that's a, it's a busy day for, totally. for like a, what 60 year old dude. Um, yeah. Luckily F- Fabian Cortez is there and, uh, whose mutant power is yeah. basically to just charge up other mutants. And, um, he, he basically just, you know, powers up Magneto again and Magneto just rips everything apart with his well, he, newfound it, superpower. Like it's very key that he like lies about it. And this yes. is, this is directly from the comics. This is so when X-Men relaunched with X-Men number one in the nineties with uh, Jim Lee and Chris Claremont, there's a seven issue arc about this essentially. Uh, that mm-hmm. is this story. Um, and it's, this is actually really accurate. Um, Cause see, Fabian Cortez says he's healing him. Um, yes. But really he just like, he juices powers. Um, so he, he juices them so he can, he can fuck shit up. Um, and he's even saying like, Hey, you know what? let's fuck up. Let's kill those humans. Uh, you know, they, they, they brought sentinels. Like let's kill the flat scans, um, which is like the, the, this version's version, like the, a slur against humans. Uh, and, uh, see, you know, Magneto is, is a good guy. And he's like, no, you know, we got what we came for. Let's just get out of here. I rescued tons of mutants. We're gonna go up into space. Uh, they yeah, go and, up into and, s- space. And Fabian treats this dude like, a, he keeps calling him Lord Magneto, right? Like there's always, yeah. there's always this like, weird authoritarian vibe to the way that uh fabian treats magneto and magneto at some point and i'm skipping ahead just a little bit is basically like hey d- you don't have to do any of that like i need hard workers <laughs> like we're trying to build something here like don't call me Lord. yeah yeah um, stop uh because because the one thing about this episode as much as it's goofy like fabian cortez is pretty over the top uh in this like his his uh his voice acting he gets very melodramatic uh, in the second episode specifically, <laughs> he really you know, does. <laughs> Magneto, like he's just really, really uh, over the top. Uh, there's cool history stuff here, and I uh, was doing research, and I guess in the uh, the actual air order, this is referenced before this um, this character that we're running to, but here it shows up for the first time. So there's a little bit of like things being out of order, but uh, while they're uh, kind of milling about in the mutant lobby uh, on Asteroid M. Um, Beast and Xavier recognize Amelia Voigt, uh, who is a character that's shown up again before in the cartoon, uh, in the air order, not in the intended order. This is supposed to be her first appearance. And this is one of professor X's ex girlfriends. Yeah. Uh, here. She, he, he met her while he was, um, basically trying to rehabilitate. She was a nurse and, um, also a mutant and came to, came to him, came with him to America when he founded the school and founded the X-Men and, uh, kind of their, their whole breakup is around the fact that she doesn't, she, he was devoting his entire life to this thing that she didn't really feel like was important. I like this flashback that we get. Actually, I think we might be cutting ahead a little bit, but I want to talk about it here. Um, just because we get to see like cool silver age X-Men, um, stuff and like, man, like I love as goofy as they are, like, but seeing Iceman in that weird, like, <laughs> not like hard ice, like in the snowman, say it's just so hilarious to be a great, mm-hmm. uh, Jean Grey's giant yellow bird eye thing. Like, I just, I love the Silver Age outfit so much with Beast running around, flipping out, and everything. So that's always fun when they do that. It's, um, yeah, I, I like that too. And she says something very, uh, very specifically, like, insightful here where she's like, hey, as long as the X Men are on Earth, mutants will never know peace. You know, she says something like, like, as long as your fight continues, like, again, just people very reasonably questioning, like, hey, what you're doing isn't working, dog. 
you know, like you were, you're making things worse for mutants. Like you think you're making things better, but like, you know, the Sentinels maybe wouldn't exist without the X-Men, you know, the, this kind of like, uh, you know, arms race thing. Like there's, you know, we should opt out of this. Like we got to go to space. This is a better idea, you know, um, <laughs> kind, kind of reasonable. Um, all those, uh, those, those people, the human ast- people show up or, or become a plot point because Fabian Cortez is like execute the humans. Uh, Magneto says, you know, they're my guests. As long as they're my guests, they'll be treated with respect. Uh, and then holds like a, a dinner, um, in his, <laughs> this outfit that is directly from the comics, but this like amazing, like one piece robe, like a robe over footy pajamas with a red yeah. sash around his belt with his fucking like super pecs. Yes, like, good with guy. his just white ass chest hair, like just on display, like that uh, virile like dude that he is. Like he can silver. I could definitely see Sean Connery like doing this at some point in his life, right? Or like Sam Elliott would definitely would wear this at like a dinner dude. party. Because fuck it, who's gonna fuck if, with uh, Sam Elliott at his own dinner party? Nobody. Yeah, like, this is this is like <laughs> the like I imagine this being the Magneto that flooded a thousand basements. Like this just being <laughs> <laughs> fucking nip like oh man it's it's something and like just to, to do that at dinner too like i would like if you're having like a party like you're gonna invite people to your crib and like hang out mm. or whatever and like that's one thing if you show up in this but like to be at a dinner table and to be like toasting one another for this is so fucking weird it is it is the word you're looking for is alpha uh it is it's very so alpha. alpha yeah that's you're it's, absolutely it's, right. it's it's a class five uh move <laughs> the uh, <laughs> class five <laughs> <laughs> uh, those fucking class five mutants getting away with just going around topless all the goddamn time i yeah, swear class five mutants don't have to wear shirts like cl- class four mutants uh have to wear something over their nipples but they can wear past pasties mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. um so at this point that alarm goes off because uh asteroid m is getting shot by missiles and uh you know, Manio goes and destroys them. He can destroy missiles. It's not a big deal. But he's like, all we want to do is live alone. You know, why is Earth fucking with us? And it turns out uh, they weren't. Uh, like, Asteroid M shot the missiles first, uh, yeah. which is, you know, fucked up. Like, I mean, we know, the audience obviously knows who did this because there's one person who's been, like, sniveling about killing humans the entire time. Mm-hmm. But uh, it is, uh, you know, Magneto, again, is legitimately trying to do the right thing. Yeah, and we basically, this is the part where we get kind of downloaded on all the Amelia stuff. Um, But after this, Magneto goes back to his room to confront, and and Fabian is there. And uh, they have this conversation, and Fabian's like, no, no, it was it was definitely me, and uh, I, I, you know, we we should be actively killing all these humans. Like, his his whole deal is like that Magneto's not going far enough. Um, Yeah. Um, Then Magneto's hand disappears. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Yeah. In, in yeah. one of the sillier things of this very good set of episodes is that uh, Magneto losing his powers and getting kind of artificially juiced, you know, like he's losing his zero point. Like when he gets unjuiced, he's going further and further down, um, you know, kind of two steps forward, three steps back um, until like he's literally kind of dissolving. Um, and as he's dissolving, he can't use his power. Um, Fabian uh, Cortez blasts his living quarters out into space. Um, and then, mm-hmm. uh, the X-Men show up to try to see what's going on and Fabian Cortez blames them. And that's our, our cliffhanger. I do want to talk about just for a minute that Fabian Cortez, uh, as during this conversation with Magneto is, says something like, I'll renounce you. And Magneto's like, you're going to renounce me? Like, no way. I really yeah. thought he was about to say, I'll renounce you, motherfucker. I <laughs> like I thought he was going to go all in. <laughs> you can't fire me. I quit. Uh, God, do I wish he had, that we got a double renounce. Uh, <laughs> the double, the, 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 the fabled, the very rare double renounce. Yeah. yeah this Fabian. is all extremely good. Like I'm like yeah. even talking about it now, I'm kind of t- wrapped up back in the plot again. Right. Like it's, it's a lot of fun. Like this is, and, and we're, we haven't really mentioned it, but on this asteroid, there are just mutants everywhere. There's just mutants hanging out all the time. Like there's never a room that doesn't have 20 fucking mutants in it to like yeah. hanging out. It's, everyone's making speeches all the time. Like it's just, it's just all good time. It's actually like the, this arc, um, is one of the strongest things to come out of the nineties comics. I think like this very mm-hmm. first part with, uh, the acolytes. And then later, um, when Colossus joins them during fatal attractions, which is like a silly crossover in some ways, but then it ends up resulting in like an episode, an issue that was one of my favorites growing up where like, um, there's a trial for one of the uh, acolytes that betrayed Magneto and Magneto's long dead. Um, and Colossus is one of the acolytes and he's, uh, like the only person who knew Magneto when he was alive, like all these people were, 
are new and they're just there for the idea of Magneto. And they do a trial uh, for him where Colossus has to defend him in court uh, based on like the principles of Magneto. And like, it's a really cool, 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 cool issue of that comic. Um, like a, a pretty I to, famous I, to, I guess I need to go read that. Yeah, I need to I need to go look at yeah. some of that stuff. I I never a, I was not really familiar with the alkalites or, or really anything. So like I was I did some research as this when I, when I saw what was going on in this episode. I was like, oh, I'd probably need to know who Fabian Cortez is, but I wasn't familiar like, with him from the from the nineties. They get lame. Like um, a character named Exodus uh, kind of takes over them, who I've never really liked that much. And then they show up every once in a while. I think the guy who uh, Gambit is supposed to be friends with in this, I think, is loosely based on a later acolyte called Vindaloo. Uh, which is a bad name for Ooh, wow. that's, that's the setting on Indian food. That's, you know, gives you fiery diarrhea. Like it's, it's not the, uh, the, the, the kind of thing that you want to name your, your superhero about o- over, but like it's a later acolyte suck, but the, like it's like X-Men um, one through seven deals with it. I think there's like a little bit of like Omega red in there, but mostly it's that. And then uncanny X-Men 300. And then later, I think X-Men uh, number 15, I think might be the trial one with Colossus, but there's like a kind of an arc that happens with these guys and asteroid M and stuff. And it's all extremely cool. Um, I, I'm very there for it. So, um, and fatal attractions was the first crossover I collected. So I have a lot of, uh, affection for it. Like I bought all the issues and they all had hologram covers, like a little tiny <laughs> card that was a hologram. Um, you know, Gambit was my favorite character, which I've talked about a lot. And one of the X-Men ones mm-hmm. had a Gambit hologram and I bought two copies so I could, uh, peel the uh, the holograph hologram off one of them and use it as like a trading card. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So love it was. Uh, I love that. Way 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 into it. Super super good. Um, so Sanctuary Part 2, uh, with Magneto seemingly dead, Fabian Cortez takes over Asteroid M and initiates a nuclear war with Earth. The X-Men attempt to sabotage his warhead stockpile, rescue Gambit, and uh, they find assistance in the most unlikely of places. Um, I don't think that's super accurate, but um, I'll, I'll allow it. Yeah. Yeah, so we ended the last episode with Fabian accusing X-Men, Xavier, excuse me, X-Men, Xavier, Beast, and Gambit of uh, basically killing Magneto and jettisoning him out of the asteroid. So this episode opens with them being chased by the Acolytes, and then um, they they find the human astronauts and, like, rustle those dudes up and are like, hey, you got to get us the hell out of here. Like, get us on your rocket ship and fly us out. Um, mm-hmm. And then they do, but the acolytes are coming so fast that they, they aren't able to like Gambit has to stay behind basically so that he can fight them off to give them time. Gambit lasts well, about it, 0. 0.3 seconds. With this, by the way. <laughs> he is yeah, so he ineffectual. Does, he, he does his move. He throws a couple of cards at them, which is, mm-hmm. is, is what, uh, what you'd have to have to guess the, um, so the, uh, and it's like, they do set a good sense of stakes here. Cause they're the X-Men. Um, they're superheroes. However, uh, here's like 80 mutants fighting them. You know, like yeah. it's like, oh, like this is this is a this is a small nation. Um, we can't we can't fight these fuckers. You know, like we got to get out of here uh, and regroup. Um, you know, because everything's turned shitty. So it just makes sense for them to do it. Um, the reason why Gambit, you know, it's kind of implied. The reason why Gambit tries to stay behind because he does have his friend there. He is trying to sacrifice himself. It is noble, but like he has a buddy here. Uh, you know, who he would like to like to save. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, he sacrifices himself. Uh, they. Crash land on Earth. There's kind of like a long sequence where, like, you know, they might re-enter. It's very similar to the end of the Phoenix Saga thing, or the middle of the <laughs> Phoenix Saga where they're crashing on Earth. Like, it's not that exciting, but Rogue ends up helping them, like slowing it down. Uh, but then, like, looks around and Gambit's not on the ship, and like starts freaking out. And again, in like something that never happens in cartoons, like rather than her flying off on her own and doing something stupid, B says, "No, he stayed behind so we could get away, but we're gonna go get him. Just like help yeah. me fix the ship." And she goes, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> Rather than just like you know, fly bust through the stupid. ceiling. Yeah, <laughs> that's so good. Fly out through the ceiling Again, like, and like, ah, uh. 
this is one of the reasons I love these episodes because they're just mm-hmm. acting like like they actually have a brain and can make a decision. Yeah, like it's it's so good. It's it's so refreshing to see these characters do this. Where she's still real upset, but Beast is like, "Don't worry, we have to finish equipping the Blackbird so that it can fly into space." And then Xavier has to put on his new threads, which we're going to talk about in a minute because he's Christ. Oh, very much so. Um, and then we're going to go get him. So like that's that's awesome. Uh, yep. We go back, and this is where Fabian starts to wear on me a little bit because he's doing these like over protracted speeches where he's like, "This is the person that killed your leader," and you know, we, like riling this 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 mob up basically. And then uh, kind of, I kind of expected him to try to kill Gambit, but basically says, "No, no, no." By the end of the day, you're going to be wanting to join us. Like we're gonna we're yeah. gonna convert you. We're uh, gonna brainwash you. Yeah, which is which is kind of freaky, and even like. Amelia is, is looking at this like eh, this doesn't really seem right. <laughs> like yeah. this is legit. Um, and then they yeah. go have a funeral for a Magneto, Gary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, they do a very quick uh, funeral for Magneto. Uh, Jeremy, the million dollar question: Did you notice what Rogue is wearing during this? No, I did not. <laughs> it is. Uh, she looks like she's in Gone with the Wind. Uh, it's oh amazing. wait, she has little dangly bits coming down. I thought that was uh, Wolverine that had the weird like uh, boat. Not it's not a bow tie. What do they call that with the uh, like a bolo tie? Like a bolo tie. That's what I was looking for. No, she doesn't have a bolo tie. She has a weird Southern lady cravat. Uh, she definitely <laughs> looks like she is a a ghost you might find in an abandoned plantation uh, that looks like a beautiful <laughs> woman, and then will turn back to you and be a horrible corpse. Like she, it is. Uh, it's she's amazing looking. Uh, it is, it is very funny that she went and like corset, like I, it's like the kind of clothes you couldn't get into without help. Um, that she mm-hmm. immediately like, you know, they, the gambits, you know, being tortured to death, but like we got to dress, do this like very fancy dress ball for Magneto who may be dead. Uh, and is, is definitely not, but they do this funeral. The funeral should not be here. It feels like, but I don't know where else it would be. Cause the, you know, pacing around, it'd be weird. Well, and he's not going to like, it, it, I mean, spoiler, like he's going to come back to life. <laughs> so like, it's, mm-hmm. it's just a weird, it's a weird thing to include, but it gives us this opportunity to talk about Magneto's past where he was abducted as a kid by these like very obvious, like Hitler looking motherfuckers, you know, the, the, his, his whole deal, right? Like this is what we always see. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, so yeah, so they, they, uh, they do the funeral. Um, we go back to, uh, uh, you know, Gamma is being tortured. Um, Amelia comes in to, to stop Gambit from being tortured. Like she's not up for things and she's going to be the, uh, the most unlikely of places, uh, that they get their help, uh, from, <laughs> I, um, I, uh, I just, I just pulled it up so I could look at this great screenshot of rogue and oh my God, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I don't dude. know how I missed this. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's, it's, it's only there for a second. So it, it's, wow. I mean, it, you only get to see her for a second, but it's really great. Yeah. That is that is that might be that might be the cover of the episode right there. Jesus, it's a, it's either going to be that or or Magneto in his like you know sexy and his, robe, with his like chest hair popping, mm. or uh, Xavier with his cheek armor. Like there's lots of like different you there's know. Lots good, there's lots of good ones. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's a, it is a good episode for fashion. Um, so Cortez goes to Earth and he's making a speech uh, essentially that I'm going to like blow up the Earth. Um, so yeah. okay, yeah, we're just going to allow that. Um, uh, and then the, the Xavier has to talk to the president again. It's like, no, 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 we're going to, we're going to leave my, ch- you know, give me another chance to stop him. Except this time we're not going to go up there to talk. Like now he means yeah. business. Like finally Xavier's getting a little mad at something. Like when somebody's threatening to explode the world. Thanks. Xavier. <laughs> <laughs> well, and again, the president lets him right in a, you know, in a worse mm-hmm. cartoon, the president would be like, no way we've already launched the nukes. And then, you know, Xavier would be, that would just like escalate things. But the president is just like, you know what? Like, I trust you. You saved my life back in season one. I fucking remember it. Uh, yeah. Or season two, like, you know, let's allow it. Um, so they, they, they head on their, on their way out. Amelia talks to Gambit uh, and Gambit says that there's a real weird line where Gambit says something like, you ever wonder how Fabian Cortez get to Magneto quarter so quick. Um, and then again, just everyone acting normal. She goes, no. Um, and that's exactly the answer you should have. <laughs> I've never, <laughs> I've never wondered that. <laughs> no, 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 I didn't think about that. You fucking weirdo. <laughs> like, um, because everyone acts normal in this episode. It's great. But then she's like, I'll, I can find out though. And then, uh, goes and, and looks up security camera footage on, uh, Magneto's like hundreds and hundreds of VHS tapes that he uses to, uh, 
to <laughs> film himself in his maintain. room. It's it's he just jerks <laughs> off in that robe. Like, constantly. oh man, I do not want to see what the tape sixty nine says because it's definitely <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> it's gonna be rude. Him, it's him sixty nine with the the magnetic field that he created himself. Uh, oh, man, it's like a mother to a child. Uh, um. But yeah, she finds, I don't think she, we see it now, but she does find the tape missing. So she's going to have to contrive some shit later to, to go find this tape. Um, yeah. This is where we get the X-Men's new fancy costumes. And I, yes, like Wolverine is in his like kind of standard, like black costume. Stealth He's an mode. X-Force. It's weird. It was like way before X-Force. Oh, that is his along. X-Force. Yeah. Yeah. That is. His yeah. X-Force it's exactly thing. an X-Force com- costume, man. Yeah. It's fucking weird. And then, um, yeah. like rogue is is also wearing some weird shit like but all of that is nothing compared to like xavier's new like out in the field costume which is like this purple thing with what looks like the uh the 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 virus the um techno virus yeah yeah (laughs) like he's like he's half taken over by the borg or some shit it's so weird what is this i don't he wears in the in the cartoon in the cart or in the comic in the comic it has this like metal thing attached to his spine that lets him trans this is so fucking dumb like transmit psychic energy to help him walk oh yeah yeah, yeah. Um, I, do, I do remember it's, that. I don't it's remember his this, walking armor i don't remember him having the the cheeks though i don't remember having him he, covered he does cheeks, have the but... weird cheek like the cheek armor like it is uh it's really dumb looking like he looks i'm like rogue actually look like rogue looks like she's dressed up as maverick to me you know just like like yellow and black like combat armor rogue which is silly because rogue doesn't need that but like whatever she wanted a new co- everyone gets a new costume. She wanted one too. But Xavier looks absolutely ridiculous. Um when you can you can actually play as him in one of the X-Men Legends games, and this is what he wears. And oh, it's, well, it's a big sense. nope. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it, it means I won't do it. So <laughs> well, like, just give that dude a floating uh, chair. Come on. You, totally. have it, you have it right there. What's what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Anywho, um, so where are they at? They have the costumes. Mm-hmm. Um they sneak onto the asteroid um, until eventually they just bust through a wall. Like rogue carries Wolverine through. They're going after Fabian while beast has to disable some missiles. Yeah. Um, uh, Fabian Cortez at this point, I fucking love this. Like he has this holo, <laughs> like this holographic, like fantasy display of, it's not just like different costumes. You have in here his dress up, but during one of them, he has two of the other acolytes, like late, like women <laughs> yeah. on yeah. his legs. Like he's Conan the barbarian. <laughs> Um, I think it's I'm such so a weird thing. It. Like, like uh, Fabian, like is like number one. I, I love the fact that he's like you know it, it, like, trying to pick out his new um like <laughs> dictator outfit because that's just a that's a side of dictators that I think is really funny. The fact that they like any mm-hmm. kind of supervillain has to be so outlandish with this stuff. So the fact that he's like trialing some stuff out, I think is hilarious. And then he's kind of like flipping channels and then he gets to the one with the two women, like you mentioned, and he's just, the, the camera goes back to him and he's like, yeah, God, <laughs> he's just I, so excited for it. He's, <laughs> I am like, so here for the scene, man. Like this would be a good gift, like not to give you gift homework, but him flipping through those channels and then landing at having the last thing be his face where he's like, got that smile. Mm-hmm. Uh, it would be, is, is very good. Um, I love it. Um, so, uh, Amelia tricks him to leaving the room. Amelia was, we didn't mention can turn into fog. Yeah. Uh, so she can kind of teleport and, and go under doors and stuff. It's a pretty cool power. Um, so she announces that somebody, you know, else called for Fabian. He leaves, she goes in to get the security tape. Um, Wolverine and Rogue start trying to fight the acolytes, but there, there are so many fucking acolytes. Um, uh, and these are all these like weird specific characters that are like, you know, pretty accurate. Uh, yeah. to the uh to the the cartoon like you get the the weird the twins the Kleinstock brothers mm-hmm. um you get Javits and like all these just you know again just weird uh weird characters at one um, point um and again I don't I don't know the names of the acolytes but uh one of the chicks basically has like a like a, pro- a giant hand projection that she's dealing with and, yeah and Wolverine looks looks over and, and tells Rogue like mm, she'd be a handful on a date. Yes. Can you dial that down a little bit? <laughs> we are we are on a floating asteroid <laughs> trying to save our our teammate and also yeah. the world. Um, it's um oh God, what, she's not Amelia. I thought she was Amelia Voigt. She has another name that is like um I think just a person's name. But uh, it's, it's, she's, it's very si- similar to um to Armor, who shows up later in the X Men uh, comic. I think they call her Amelia Volt in this. Is that um, is that the name that they use? No, or am I, am I yeah, Amelia, Amelia Void is um is the lady who can turn into fog. 
Um, this okay. this, she has another just like regular name. I can't remember that character's name right now though. But she's one of the major mm-hmm. like acolytes. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. Um, but the, the, you know, Rogue and, and Wolverine lose because they are drastically outnumbered. Um, we go to the desert, <laughs> I guess, because there's like mm-hmm. camels, and Magneto's pod just lands, and then he's just like. I'm back. <laughs> and it's, you don't even he, see him. He just yells it out. He's like, I'm here. I'm resurrected or, or whatever. <laughs> as, as a giant, like ghost, like as, as a gigantic, like hologram, um, super, super weird. Yeah. This, this whole scene is, is, is very strange and it doesn't last very long. Like he just crash lands on earth and then he's alive. So mm-hmm. <laughs> good, good on us for having that funeral scene. We go back to Va- to, to Fabian, who is um, now he's got some other X Men to yell at. So he like flips on whatever switch allows him to broadcast to every TV on Earth because Asteroid M has that shit built in, right? That's stock, that's stock mm-hmm. firmware. Like yeah. that's just something that the yes. Magneto is going <laughs> to yep. need every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this time Amelia shows up and plays this security tape showing that Fabian is actually the one that killed Magneto, causing the crowd to turn and they start chasing him down. Um, he goes to this like. I guess he still wants to launch these missiles. So he runs down and there's a guy down there that's been popping up on the show. I forget his name. I, I don't know if you're, if you're familiar with him from the, from the acolytes, but uh, basically he's like, Hey, launch the missile missiles. And this dude is like, uh, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> that seems really bad. Well, I just random really like the shows that, up and random. I think he talks okay. to random. Yeah. It's, it's the guy who's like a weird X, X factor character. Okay. They yeah. keep calling him like Mr. Or something. And I, I just, I had no idea, no reference for who yeah. he was. Um, yeah. But like Gambit and Amelia show up and to stop this and like succeeds for a, like a second, but then he just launches all the missiles anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, which you know, no good. But yeah, we have two episodes in a row. Like the X Men can handle missiles. Yeah, we've um, we got we got missiles down. Yeah. Um. So Xavier Xavier and Beast try to stop them. They can stop some of them. Um. Magneto pops back up. Um. Re reborn because the Earth's magnetic field healed him. Now we've talked a lot of sugar about these two episodes. You have to pretty much ignore the fact that Magneto was dissolving, and only because the ma- the Earth's magnetic field nursed him like a mother nourishes her son uh, is what brings him back. Mm. You just kind of have to be okay with like Magneto sucking tit of Earth and yep. gaining magnet getting his strength. Magneto powers. You fail, Cortez. The Earth's magnetic field has healed me as a mother nourishes her son. Now I will have my vengeance. Because Fabian yeah. kind of told him, like, I'm going to take away your power so you're, you don't even have the strength to hold your molecules together, which yeah. I don't think. Which I guess need- he does through Magneto powers. I don't know. I would just assume they did like my shit just stays naturally. <laughs> like I don't have yeah. to worry about it at all. <laughs> yeah. Like you would think that Magneto, like yeah. is that the trade off? Like you're constantly having to hold your own body, your your corporeal form together at all times. That would but, suck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like constantly doing kegels, <laughs> except for, for, for your entirety of your mind, <laughs> your entire body. <laughs> yeah. Full body kegel. Like, uh, but uh, luckily Magneto, like just, destroys all the missiles he just strips them down and there's no more missiles we don't have to worry about that yeah um, because magneto is fucking pissed right? yeah like magneto the magneto is done with this so like rogue goes and he just starts like wrecking shop rogue goes and rescues gambit and gambit's weird buddy um and amelia voight um they're getting out of here and they like very weird for the x-men they're just like you know what we're gonna stay out of magneto's way because this is justice like let him summarily execute uh sure Fabian Cortez. Like the, 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 and also, there's just tons of mutants on this thing. <laughs> like, there's a whole yeah. nation of people. Like, um, you got better things to do. There's also like this thing when uh, Rogue finally catches up with Gambit. He's with Amelia, who is like a, a redheaded, attractive woman. And uh, Rogue is like kind of jealous. She's like, "Next time you go running around, make sure you're not doing it with another woman and all this other stuff." And I'm like, "Where?" I, and I know, yeah. I guess you said at the beginning, like we just have to accept them as a couple, like, and that's fine. It's just really, yep. it, it really feels like it's coming out of nowhere when it, cause it bounces all over the place. That's probably something about the timeline of the show being so screwy, but like, mm-hmm. man, I just don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it at all. Yeah. I think even, I think it's, it doesn't, I think it's silly. doesn't Wolverine at this point too. Like, isn't he like watching the two of them, like make googly eyes at each other. He's like, Oh, you're making me sick or, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't like that. There's any flirting going on between the two of them. And like, he doesn't like it and we don't really like it either. <laughs> yeah. To be frank, I'm pro I'm anti flirt when it comes to the X-Men. <laughs> yep. Keep that shit in your yep, pants. Yep. X, X, X-Men. Yeah. Um, um, 
so, so like Magneto, you have to get out. And he's like, no, I'll be fine. I'm going down with the ship. You know, I made this utopia. I have to see it through to the end. He says, it's a really cool line. He says something like, if my dreams are going to die, I'm going to stand here and see it happen or something mm-hmm. like it's a, there's a cool line. Um, and then he, uh, like sends, like he's, you know, he's, he's like, I'll survive, but he blows up or sends, uh, Fabian Cortez out or traps him or something like does something that means he's going to die. Yeah. Um, I can't remember exactly what, because after we get this little bit with, uh, Amelia and Xavier kind of making up a little bit, um, Cortez wakes up like he didn't die in the explosion apocalypse and somebody who I don't recognize, uh, saved him. Yeah. Some, some chick whose outfit is way too deliberate for her not to be somebody. So, uh, yeah, I, but I, I did not recognize at all. So, um, a bad yeah. X-Men fan over here. I can't help it. Everybody. Um, yeah, this is, this, this feels okay. Like if, if you're apocalypse, you probably want a mutant that can juice other mutants powers up. Like that seems like a good oh, thing to totally. have. No, that's, yeah. And yeah, I, I know apocalypse shows up again. So I think that maybe, Fabian Cortez shows up. That's a weird thing where I think they're off comics. I don't think Fabian Cortez ever gets hooked up with, uh, with apocalypse in the comics. Gotcha. Hmm. Um, but you know, I, I, he does, I, he comes back a couple times. He ends up being like, not a super important character, but you know, shows up a few times. Um, I'm pretty cool with him showing up again as a villain, uh, just because he, you know, he is an interesting, uh, thing and you do kind of hate him, you know? Um, and just like anything Magneto plays off of to be a hero, I'm generally down for. Yeah. Same. Like mm-hmm. hero Magneto is my favorite Magneto. Yeah. And this stuff um, is, is like primo. We, we'd mentioned it at the top of the episode, but like this is primo Magneto, like his speeches. Uh, I'll probably cut in a bunch of that audio just so we can have it. Um, but yeah, like, his speeches and stuff are just so fucking good. Like they were just so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Um, yeah, I don't have any more to say. I, I like I said, I think this is like, these would be good episodes to show somebody if you want to show them like, Hey, this cartoon is actually very good. You know, um, Agreed. It, it's it re- relies a little bit on like knowing, uh, you know, like getting some joy out of the cameos and stuff. Um, if you don't, uh, if you don't like, you know, if you don't know the characters, if you don't care about the, the cameos, you'll get a little less out of it. But I still think that like, even if you do have that stuff, you can pick it up pretty easily. Um, the metaphor is really, uh, on display. The, um, uh, yeah. and even if you don't know like who the mutants are, because I didn't really, again, I, I didn't really understand who the acolytes were until I was about halfway, until I was done with the first episode. I was like, oh, I should probably go look these dudes up before the second episode. Um, but like just seeing all of the mutant powers, right? Like seeing how deliberate that they're, they're coded, like makes me want to go look up all of those dudes. <laughs> like, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, I want to go find out who they are and read comic books about them. Like, that's the one thing that we, we always talk about this with the show is that it, it does that thing with the X-Men where you, you, you see just enough to kind of get you hooked. And you're like, Oh, I want to know more about apocalypse or I want to know more about this Fabian Cortez guy. Like I want to go find out more about that stuff. And the fact that it it's kind of makes you want to do that is, is a very good thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you're really good. Good stuff. I'm glad. I hope the rest of the season, I think it'll probably be uneven like season three and probably like season five will be as well. Uh, but I, I like the idea that there's possibility of these kind of uh, episodes in it. So yeah, um, not to bum you out, but the our next episode of the <laughs> podcast is the very first episode we're covering is um, Professor Xavier versus the Shadow King. So I'm sure that that's going to be oh. super great uh, and oh, awesome. Boy. Yeah, um, just to just to mention, uh, daysoffuturecast dot com slash schedule is where you can go and see what episodes we're covering on which episode of the podcast. Uh, the next time you hear us, we'll be covering three episodes: uh, Xavier remembers Courage and Secrets Not Long Buried. I don't know where Se- those are. Secrets not long buried is such a Claremont title. <laughs> like I went through, there's a, like a guy who reviewed X-Men comics uh, in the early 2000s named Paul O'Brien. And I used to read my first job where I had internet. That's how I wasted time was like reading his website. Mm-hmm. Um, and I went back and found all of them on the Wayback machine and was like reading them before bed for a little while. And it would, I would have all these Xavier titles from, or not Xavier uh, Claremont titles from like his shitty mid 2000s X-Men. And they all have titles like that. Like bravery, but what cost doth pay? You know, like the, the name of the storyline, <laughs> secrets not yet long buried. Like all garbage, like that. Like it is so Chris Claremont. Like, uh, dude, you were you were not Neil Gaiman. Like, calm huge, it down. huge fucking bummer. Uh, huge. But bummer. yes, we'll be covering those three next, and then um, because we usually do only do two episodes, but uh, we're after that. There's going to be some two parters that we like to try to keep on all on one episode without having to break them up. So that's the reason we're doing that. Um. 
what else? Gary, if you like the show, you should go to patreon.com slash TV and support the network where you can fund cool shows like Heartbeat City, Radio Free Midworld, and get all kinds of cool rewards to like episodes of podcasts early or access to the Slack channel. Um, yes. which is a cool place to be on the internet. I don't care what, I don't care what people say it is. Yeah. Yeah. Fuckos. Um, yeah, yeah it, it is a, it'll, it'll be, uh, it'll be extremely fun if you go do that and very appreciated. Um, ratings and reviews, telling your friends, um, those are both things that are very useful. Um, you know, for us getting more people to hear this show and uh, you can come say hi. If you want to come say hi to me, I am at Gary, but G A R Y B U H on Twitter. Uh, where are you on Twitter, Jeremy? I am at JG Greer. Very easy to find. Yeah. Come, come say hi. Um, I think that's probably about it. Yeah, I think so. Uh, um, until next time, just don't let the mother, mother don't let the earth nurse, nurse you like a mother. <laughs> Cause that's kind of totally. weird. And it, it, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm.